Coming up today on That LTD Life, let's start our very own internet radio station. Now, I don't know about you, but when I think of internet radio, I just get flashes of the real player. Now, that was the late 1990s, and at that time, I was a huge Pearl Jam fan. They're a great band, and they also used to experiment with running their own radio station. They would pull into shows with this specific van right here. You can see this is from 1995, and they would set up a pirate radio station and broadcast their favorite songs to anyone in the local area. Now, as a young kid at the time, I didn't have the money or the ability to acquire such equipment, but I thought it was an amazing idea and I desperately wanted to start my own radio station. So flash forward nearly three decades and maybe I can finally do so with Radio Lies over on AppSumo. You can see it's just 99 bucks, that's a one-time payment, and it says I'll be able to create, broadcast, and manage my own radio station over the cloud with a simple all-in-one tool. All right, I am sold. Let's check out what we're gonna get for 99 bucks and I'm gonna start up my own radio station. And by the end of this video, hopefully I'm gonna have a link that you can actually click and listen to my radio station. All right, so here are the plans and pricing. Before I get into this, I should point out that this looks like it's going to be a short-term deal. AppSumo just sent out a blast about this deal today in their email. So I think it's brand new as well, but it's only gonna be up on AppSumo for 14 more days. So jump on this right away, don't wait around if this is something that's interesting to you. All right, onward to the plans. Basically, all of the plans include unlimited bandwidth. That's great, so it's one thing not to factor in. What you do need to factor in is how much storage do you need? You wanna put a lot of music or you know, spoken word, whatever you're gonna put up on your radio station, are you going to have a lot of data? Well, then you'll need obviously a larger plan and they do scale pretty quickly, only 10 gigs for tier one, tier three is 100 gigs, and there's actually a tier four as well, which doubles that and goes up to 200 gigs for $500. The other factors that come into play are the stream quality. You are limited on tier one to just 128 kilobytes per second. If you're just doing spoken word, this is completely acceptable. If you're doing music, people's standards, I think, are a little bit higher these days, and you probably want to do 192. Now, it depends on what device they're listening on. That whole audio file debate is something for a different channel entirely, but I would say that 192 is a pretty good compromise of quality and compression. You can still listen to music at 128. Just ask anyone who stole files from Napster back in the early 2000s. Everything was at 128 back then, and no one knew any better. The third factor to consider is how many people are gonna be listening to you simultaneously. Now, if you've already got a big audience, you might need a bigger plan. We can go all the way up to your four here is gonna be 10,000 listeners. And as we scale down, it goes to 5,000 at tier three, 2,500 at tier two, and 1,000 listeners for tier one. All right, so those are your three main factors. How much storage do you need? How many people are gonna listen to you at once? And what quality do you want the audio to be? Now the radio station I'm gonna be building today is not really aligned with the Pearl Jam fan of the 1990s. Instead, I'm gonna be taking all of my taco truck roundups, the weekly summary videos that I produce, and putting them on my own radio station. So for that, I think 1,000 simultaneous users and 128 kilobits per second is going to be just fine. That's the plan I'm gonna grab. All right, so I've just created my account and this looks very much like WordPress. In fact, I know this is the WordPress login screen here, so. I am intrigued, what am I getting myself into here? All right, I've reset my password, I'm gonna log in now. All right, here we go, I'm logged into what is definitely a WordPress website on the back end. It looks maybe like it's a WooCommerce type of site here. We've got our order information and then I can see my stations, create new and my account up here. So let's go ahead and create a new station. All right, it's just took me to the pricing page, so maybe something didn't get transferred over correctly. Yeah, so checking the account page, it says my name is AppSumo user. All right, so I'm reaching out to support. I can't believe this is happening. This is the third time in like three weeks that I've purchased a code on AppSumo and then tried to redeem it and nothing. So I, it almost has to be on my end at this point, right? I mean, comment down below. Have you ever had this happen to you? It's just a brand new phenomenon for me. So I guess at this point, I'm going to pause the video, pause the recording, and I'll come back as soon as I get access to my account eventually. All right, what appears to be like the weirdest onboarding process ever, I did receive this email. It just looked like a standard account creation email, so I kind of just ignored it. In fact, I didn't even open it up. But it does say here, if you are just created a new radio station, please wait until our system creates your radio station automatically. 
This process may take some hours. You can refresh the page and then they give you a link. So I clicked over here and now I automatically, well, at least after I clicked it, that it says my account is active and it says creating station or station unavailable. So maybe we're good now. I'll hit create new. No, it still takes me over to the pricing page. Okay, so I totally understand if this system just needs a little bit of time to do this rather complicated task. In fact, it might be done manually since this is definitely WordPress. Uh, it might need some time to be able to set this up. That's totally fine. But you need to say that very big letters in the automating process. Hey, this is gonna take a little bit after you sign up. Please be patient. We will email you to notify you when your station is available. But I didn't see that. I don't think I missed anything. All right, some progress has been made. About two hours have passed. And you can see here that now I have my AppSumo account and I've got this button over here that says Studio. So let's click on it. Logged in successfully. All right, I can see some stats here about what's going on. I've got my station name. They've just called it AppSumo and then these weird letters afterwards. And there's a public page I can go to here. Let's click on this. All right, so it says the station is online. I can hit play. Obviously, I'm not playing anything right now. I can see the song history and I can even request a song. All right, that's pretty cool. So I mentioned WordPress a few times during the setup experience. I wanna point out that this is clearly not WordPress now. So they're just using that for their e-commerce solution. And then somehow that's spinning up basically whatever application this is that I assume something custom they've created to allow you to actually run your own radio station. There are a bunch of tutorials up here. So if you want to watch them, it'll redirect you over to the site. Uh, I did see the tutorials. Yeah, there we go. They do exist. So if you want to uh, figure out how to actually run this in a little bit more of a business sense, you can find out. You can schedule some jingles, ads, and commercials. All right, so I'm gonna click on this manage button down here and let's go ahead and get some stuff loaded in. So I can add my media right over here. I'll click on media and I can just dump in all of my files. It does say you can upload files in bulk via SFTP. So if you're a little bit technical and you want to do that, that is probably a good option. However, what I'm going to do is just grab these MP3 files and drop them in and hopefully everything goes smoothly. All right, looks like they are uploading not only smoothly, but very quickly here. All right, so everything has been uploaded and I can see all of my tracks right here. I have a pencil icon, I can click on them, change the file name, change the title. Uh, notice that I put the, you know, this was not created with music in mind. I just literally ripped all of the audio off of YouTube and then uploaded it here. So I'd have to go through and you know, change this to be appropriate for the type of content I'm gonna be producing. But uh, so far, looks pretty good. So with all of my media uploaded, I'm gonna create a playlist. So I'll just select all of my tracks that I uploaded and I'll go to playlist here and I'm gonna create a new playlist called Taco Truck and hit save. Now, all of my files have been added to that new playlist and I can see it over here under Taco Truck. There's currently 10 tracks inside of it. It's gonna run for about four hours and 53 minutes. Now, inside of this playlist, I can click on the pencil icon here, and that's gonna allow me to schedule my content or even set it up to be available on demand, so more like a podcast. You just check this right here, and then there's an on-demand page I can show you later so that people can go and listen to each episode on demand. There's also a playback order here, so you can decide between shuffling your tracks or having them go sequentially, or maybe even just random. And there's some other settings here like playback type, which lets you make sure certain tracks play every certain number of minutes or every certain hour. We can also turn on our ads over here, but I'm not gonna get into the ads inside of this video. I'm gonna move over to the schedule tab here and create a new schedule. So I'm just gonna have these playing 24 seven. All right, so that should do it. Everything should now play, I believe 24 seven. So you could set up multiple playlists and just have them come on at certain times of the day. There's also the option to have them interrupt other songs if there's something scheduled at that time that's already playing. So lots of advanced features here. All right, so I got my schedule set here. I did notice it says to leave blank to play on every day of the week. So I deselected these. I don't know if it makes a difference, but I've got this saved. And now my assumption would be that the music is probably playing. So let's find out. Here are the public pages, by the way. So we've got the on-demand page. Now, if I were to have checked this box inside of my playlist and save it, then if I open up that on-demand page and reload maybe, yeah, I'd expect that to start playing, but I noticed there's a restart button here. So I'm just gonna do that. Quick restart, it says it'll kind of basically just reboot this, this station. And now that that's done, I'm gonna look at my public page for on-demand media. 
Okay, so I need to sort out the on-demand media. We'll come back to that. There's a few more public pages to check out. First of all, we've got the calendar, actually second of all, but I'm gonna go work backwards here. And I can see my calendar. I set up that one playlist to just play 24 seven, which it's currently set to do. And then there's the stream page, which should actually be playing my audio right now. And in fact, it is. You can see it's one minute and 27 seconds into this recording. Now I'd have to take the time to go through and label all these tracks properly, as I already mentioned. I can change the name of my radio station and I will show you that in a moment. Problem with using Letterly for this, it's not that it's incapable of doing it, all right, I'm listening to it. It sounds pretty good. So this is a link. I could just share this with you and then you'd be able to listen to Taco Truck Roundup 24 seven. Now it's worth noting in the playlist view, there's also a schedule view here as well. So you can see which playlist is scheduled to play, but let's keep going. Here is the settings where we can go ahead and rename our radio station. I'll call this the Taco Truck Roundup and I could give it a logo, a website, a genre, time zone. You can modify the compression rating. So if you wanted to normalize your audio, you could. I can turn on on-demand streaming, which is already on. So still don't know why that wasn't working, but there's lots of customization here. How many recently played songs, banning IPs. So maybe you're having someone uh, causing some trouble. You can go ahead and remove them from listening. Back over on the dashboard, it's been updated here. I can see that there's been three listens. There is 208 megabytes of data being used up out of the 10 gigs that I have available. So overall looking pretty good. My radio station name looks much better now, but I do have to fix this logo. Now, kind of irritating the logo URL. You can't actually upload a logo. You have to link to it. Luckily for me, I can go to clientamp.com, go to the taco truck roundup. And here is my logo. I'll copy that address, paste it in here, hit save, and we're good to go. Now it'd be better if this were square, everything looks a little funny, but it worked. There's some more settings here that are worth pointing out. So we've got relays. This sounds technical. Like you are a real radio person. You might know what this is. I am not a real radio person if that's not clear, but uh, yeah, there's relays. It says you can use remote broadcasting software that's outside of the server. So that is really cool. Then there's also SFTP integration. We already mentioned that, but you get your information right over here. You can add users. And then there are integrations, specifically webhooks. You can go ahead and set up a webhook. There are a few to choose from. Basically what we're gonna be able to do is let people know when we're broadcasting. Or there's a couple of analytics integrations. So if you're using uh, Matomo or Google Analytics, you'll be able to send data over to those platforms. Oh, there is a generic web hook here as well. It says it will automatically send a message to any URL when your station data changes. Then there is a huge list of reports here. We've got the overview, a listener report. So you can see where everybody's listening from. Song requests, you saw that button when people are listening, they can request a song. Playback time to see how long people have been listening. We've got listener impact, so you can see which tracks cause people to start listening or stop listening. Duplicate songs, basically just looking to make sure you haven't uploaded the same song more than once. Unprocessable files, so if there's any errors, and sound exchange royalties. So this is for reporting royalties that you may owe if you play copyrighted music through your radio station. I am not gonna touch the legality of that. Probably best to just only play music you have the rights to. All right, so I'm gonna be dropping the link to this radio station that I've just created in the description of this video. So you can check it out and let me know what you think. But there's a few more features here that I've gotta show you. The first one is the live studio, which is exactly what it sounds like. I can go ahead and broadcast live here. Now you just give it access to your microphone. You can go ahead and start streaming and just have a conversation right over the internet for everybody to listen to. So if you're a podcaster, you'd be able to bring in your live recording feed if you wanted to, maybe for a members only thing, or you can come up with whatever idea makes the most sense. And you'd be able to let your podcast be listened to live like a real radio show. That's actually pretty cool. Now it does look like you need to have a special account called a streamer account to go ahead and broadcast live, but they've got a help doc here to walk you through the process. And there's even a video, but the features look pretty good here. We can add files to different playlists and then we can mix between them as though we are a real DJ. Very nice. And the last thing to show you, maybe not as exciting as the live studio, but you can actually add DJ accounts. So if you want other people to be able to log in and DJ for your station, well, here you go. You just create a streamer account for them. That's probably what they were talking about in the last help doc. And then you'd be able to have multiple people log into your IceCast server. There's server details right up here. You'd add their credentials. They could log in and broadcast. This is crazy technology. I can't believe for 99 bucks, I can do this forever. 
I don't know that I would do this. I think for me, I'll probably stick to YouTube. That seems to be working for me. But for other people, especially maybe people who grew up in radio that have an audience on radio, well, now you can do radio. You can do the actual thing that you love. You don't have to even just do podcasts, which are kind of a modified version of radio. All right, I just went and checked the on-demand media one more time. It just took a little time. I didn't do anything. Eventually, everything showed up, and you can now listen to each episode individually. So that's good to see. Everything is working here. You just got to be patient. So that is Radio Lies. I'm going to go ahead and give this one a score, 7.8. It's pretty amazing. It does everything it set out to do. It was sketchy at the beginning, but if you're patient, it actually follows through. And I've got a radio station in just a matter of minutes, like they promised. Wow. That's amazing. I mean, I don't even, it really is. Makes me think back to the days when the internet was pretty exciting and you never knew what was gonna be possible with the internet. And now we have memes. So if you wanna pick up a copy of Radio Lies, I've got a link down below. If you just wanna shop over at AppSumo, I've got a link for that as well. Help support the channel if you click either of those before doing so. My name is Dave Swift, by the way. You can find me at clientamp.com. I've got online courses there. I've got a free email newsletter, and you can even hire me and my team to work and build up your online business. If you like the video, make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new around here. Drop me a comment if you have any questions or if I royally botched something up in this video. I wanna know about that too. That's all for today. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next review.